Hey YouTubers, this is JD. We're back with another game in my Isolated Queen Pawn series. Uh, today we're going to look at another attack on the h6 square. Well, not specifically h6, but this piece set up that, uh, with the queen coming to h3 and just the general pressure on the king side here. Uh, today's game actually ended in a draw because white misplayed his attack. And so uh, we're going to take a look at what he actually did, and then uh, we're going to look at what he should have done with the attack, because the maneuver that he should have played is actually going to be a pretty typical uh, a pretty typical sacrifice in a way to handle the position. Uh, so let's get into it. It starts off nearly identical to the, to the last game that we just looked at. So starting off in sort of an English ready type thing, and then quickly going into a Tarash defense, or a semi Tarash rather. And uh, through a slightly different move order through this portion here, we end up with the isolated queen pawn position. <clears throat> so after rook e1, we get knight cbd4, cb4, just like in the last game, and of course, bishop to b1. Here's where the game starts to deviate. Uh, black starts to play uh, b6, intending to develop the bishop to b7, rather on d7. And uh, this is going to prepare to capture the the knight here on c3 if we ever play a3. So we get knight e5, and now bishop b7, and then a3. All right, the board's lagging a little bit. Sorry, I went too far. All right, so after a3, whoop, 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 board's going crazy. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we get a3, and the point is, is that he can't really go back to c6. Uh, if he goes back to c6, then... <clears throat> We have this problem. He has some problems with his queen because after something like this, this is uh, bishop e4, and then now bishop f4 is going to be a problem, and he's going to have uh, some serious issues dealing with uh, this pressure and so all these discoveries against his queen. Uh, note if he tries to avoid that. So, for example, he wants to after this capture here, he wants to take back with the pawn. This is really just impossible. Uh, it's going to drop a piece. After he captures here with the knight, we're drawing the bishop up to c6. And then uh, take a minute and look. Can you see it? It's just queen to c2. We're threatening mate and the bishop. So that's a, a pretty nice way to pick up some material. So uh, instead of uh, going in for these problems, he just captures on c3. So we'll go take a look at that. So knight takes c3 instead of dropping back to c6. And um, <clears throat> of course, we're going to recapture. And it makes more sense to recapture this knight than this one, of course. i got to be honest, I didn't even think about capturing here whenever I was looking at it before, because it's just going to leave us... Actually, no, we're hitting the... Our queen's being hit. That explains why I didn't look at it. And then so it comes back to knight d5. And after queen d3, we're adding some pressure here. Uh, black chose to play knight f6. Probably better was playing g6. Uh, but after c4 and then knight to f6, uh, we can play bishop h6 here. And after rook e8, uh, he, we have bishop to a2. And <clears throat> we're going to get some of the, the usual pressure that, uh, that we're typical to finding in, a, at, in an isolated queen pawn with the e6 and f7. In this case, we have an additional defender, or not defender, but attacker to help us maybe get through this d5 push. So I, I think he wants to avoid this. Well, I mean, he probably shouldn't avoid it. This is probably what he should go for. Uh, but white definitely still has still has some trumps in the position. Instead of that, he doesn't. Uh, he chooses to play back to the knight to f6. He wants to. He wants to understandably not create some weaknesses around his king. Uh, but here we swing across to h3 with the queen, and we're starting to see that that piece formation we've been looking at for the last couple games is cropping up. The queen h3, the knight e5, the rook on the e-file, this bishop's coming to g5, and then we have this bishop on the appropriate diagonal. So rook e8, and now bishop to g5, already creating some, some pressure here, and uh, he has to do something with one of these two pawns to avoid uh, the capture on f6 and then just losing h7. Um, here, it's actually g6 that uh, fails pretty badly and pretty quickly. Last time it was h6 that was the worst of the two. Now it's g6. Um, so if we look at if we look at g6, it's just bishop is going to take here, and then we're going to take here. And uh, what we did with this is remove this defender from h7, 
and then you can just capture this guy. And after this situation right here, he's going to drop, he can put the, the bishop in the way, but then we get this little skewer here. And uh, he's got to drop back, and he loses this. And so we've got a rook plus three pawns for the two bishops. Which, I mean, the two bishops are going to have quite a bit of space. The board's relatively open. But with his exposed king and all these pass pawns, it's going to be pretty tough for him to hold this position. Um, so, understandably, he doesn't want to go for that. But instead of, uh, instead of that, he chose h6, which allows us our thematic sacrifice on h6. So we're going to go back here. And oop, we went back too far. So now h6. But this just allows uh, bishop to take here. And so after the, the pawn, after the pawn takes, we get rook e3. This kind of brings an important moment here. Um, why not just take the pawn? And the reason why you can't take the pawn here is you, you should look at the, this bishop. If this bishop can play f8 without leaving f6 hanging, then he's going to be able to get his bishop around in front of his king and is going to be able to immediately execute some trades here. It's going to give us too much time because he's going to be able to bring that bishop around with tempo. So, for example, if we get this capture here, oops, oh, sorry, we still have that move on the board. If you just capture immediately, we play bishop back to here, and so you try to come back with check or something like that. Well, he's just going to play like this. And then if we try to lift the rook, he even has just ideas just playing knight to d7. And uh, he's threatening a queen trade. He's going to trade off our beautiful knight. And uh, we're just going to run out of attackers here pretty soon. Uh, so that's clearly not clearly not the way to execute the attack. Instead, it's much better to bring the, the rook up immediately. And you're going to create more threats. And uh, black doesn't have the time to play uh, things like bishop f8 now. Or even if he does play bishop f8, you can still just check. And uh, is going to create some some additional problems. So after rook e3, uh, h5 is a pretty sad necessity. But it was really tough to deal with uh, this mate threat that he was going to have here with the uh, rook to g. <coughs> excuse me, with rook to g3. <coughs> so after h5, he which is going h5 gives him access to the the g4 square here. Uh, with the with the knight and it's going to also prevent the queen from coming to h6 so quickly this is what white played he played h4 um, but this is actually quite a mistake it's going to allow uh, it's going to force him to go in for a perpetual instead uh, there's a, a really cool looking move that uh, is a technique or a pattern that we should really try to commit to memory for handling these positions Notice the pressure we have against e6 and f7 here. So the idea is just to play bishop to g6. We're of course threatening to take this pawn here when everything just collapses. And so uh, he can't really prevent that. So we may as well, he may as well take a piece. Uh, but then after the queen comes in here, he can't go to f8 because that's just mate. So he's going to be forced to go off to the side of the board. And we get to take this with check now. Again, he didn't want to go to h7 because then queen f7 is going to create even worse problems. Forced back to g6. And uh, we regain one of our pieces. We got an additional two pawns. So notice we now have three pawns for the piece. And this knight is going to be next to difficult next to impossible to hold on to. Uh, we also have really serious threats of playing rook g3, which again just is going to push the attacker, push the queen away from defending this knight as well. Um, and we're not really so worried about this pin because through some series of checks that we can always give, we'll be able to get the knight out of the way here. So uh, not, really, not really a problem at all in terms of that pin. In fact, the knight actually controls some two very key squares that uh, is going to create problems for the king to try to maneuver around once we do start uh, getting our pieces over. So this would have been a much stronger way of handling the attack. Uh, there was even another option that works really well too. Instead of the immediate bishop to g6, it's also possible to start out with rook g3. 
Um, <clears throat> and then after king f to, to f8, of course going to h8 was not possible because of knight takes f7. Uh, now you play bishop g6, and it's actually just impossible. He just can't take it now. Um, after, if he were to take it, um, we go here and we're threatening this checkmate. And so say he tries to get out of the way, which the only move he really has is here. Uh, we'll just, we're just going to, this is just terrible. There's nothing he can really even do here. Um, we're going to force him. We're going to get a very quick checkmate. Indeed. Indeed. So that's... So two ways of uh, sort of handling the attack there that would have been better than than what he sh than what he did, but this bishop g6 threat, which uh, is based on this knight on e5 and the attack on f7. Notice that f7 really has no defenders outside of the king, and so if we can get an even stronger piece than the bishop to attack it, which is the point, we sack this bishop so that our queen has access to attack f7 we're going to have some pretty serious problems for the other player to deal with. Uh, but that's not how it went. Let's take a quick look at how the game actually finished. So instead of, uh, instead of the immediate, uh, <clears throat> instead of the immediate, uh, either the bishop g6 or the check with g3, he chose to play queen to h4. So after h5 here, it went back too far. The board's really lagging, which is creating a, some problems with me maneuvering the board, so I apologize for that, guys. He plays um, rook to g3, or he tries if he can't play rook g3 yet. But he so he, his idea, I think, is that he's hoping for this bishop to f6, or sorry, f8, and uh, and he wants to now play rook to g3. And then, but the and so this would work quite well for him because of after the bishop comes in front. He forces this, which now he's got to play this move, but then he just gets queen h5, and he's going to pick this piece up, and he's not even down material, and he has a really strong attack. So I, clearly this isn't going to work for him. is isn't going to work for black, anyway. So black comes up with a, another way of handling the position. Instead of trying to get the bishop in front of the king to help defend, he displays bishop d6. And now the king has a little escape hatch, that uh, is going to let him try to get out of the game. Um, but white has a perpetual that he can give to try to save the day. So he plays king up here to go check. And then he just plays knight g6. Which the idea behind this is that he's taking away the e7 square. So after we take here, uh, he plays this. It would be a huge mistake to, to take the pawn immediately because <clears throat> it doesn't come with check and is going to give uh, black a chance to try to move a piece to get uh, opportunity to hide elsewhere to so f7 and he has to go to f7 um, or I suppose possibly g7 but he just can't go here this is the point this is why the perpetual w works because this would be mate so he's forced to go instead to f7 <clears throat> but then after that we are just going to be able to play uh, queen takes g6 it's with check this time and so king f8 queen h6 and um, back and forth so on until the end of time and so uh, we agreed drawn so the key thing here is noticing that uh, that bishop to g6 idea which is quite quite strong so let's go back and take a look at that real quick Dun, 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 dun. Where did we go? It was move 20, I believe. Um, well, we'll just do it this way. I found it. So instead of going here, uh, he played this idea with bishop to g6. Which, again, the idea is to open a route to get your queen to go attack the f7 square. And... Of course, it's uh, other moves don't work at all. The the best he can really do is just to take the bishop. If he tries to to bring other pieces over, then we're going to be able to to execute an even stronger attack. So like if rook f8, maybe we just capture and or maybe not. Let's see here, some some ideas that we could go for. So instead of 
<clears throat> instead of taking there on that, if he plays rook f8, I think the problem with that would probably be something like, um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Let's calculate. Let's take a minute and try to figure this out, guys. So, <clears throat> bishop g6, he takes here. If he plays just the rook e8, then it looks like that I think we're going to be able to do just bishop h5. Takes h5 seems like it's going to actually open up some more additional lines for the king side. So I think that would be the real problem there. Anyway, interesting, exciting game. Uh, please try to remember this technique here of playing the bishop to g6 in the situations where you've sacked on h6. Uh, keep looking forward. Leave me a comment, subscribe, and uh, we're going to see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.